In this video, I'll be showing you how to automatically export and analyze conversations from your custom GPTs across channels like web chat widgets, WhatsApp, Instagram, and more. This has been a highly requested video because many of you have started deploying your custom GPTs to these channels, but want a way to track and analyze interactions with your users. The truth is these conversational channels can be insanely powerful for businesses, but without properly storing and analyzing this data, you are losing half of the value of your GPTs as this data can contain valuable information for use in future decision-making. By the end of this video, you'll not only know how to automate the exporting of transcripts from your custom GPT deployments, but you'll also get access to my complete automation template for analyzing and extracting valuable data from them with the help of AI, adding huge value to your GPT-powered solutions. If you don't know who I am, my name is Liam Otley and I run my own AI development company, Morningside AI and run the largest community of AI agency owners in the world, where my students learn how to make money by selling AI solutions to businesses, just like the system you're about to build. Let's get into it. Firstly, we need a quick explainer of this build and how this system works. This is going to be using the Assistance API, which you may be familiar from my other videos, but we are creating these custom GPTs that we can put onto our, our WhatsApp channel, onto our website, etc. But we're going to be calling that same API, but this time in a different way that allows us to request and, and pull all of the transcripts and messages from the interactions that our users have had with the API. OpenAI allows us to get that information at any time we want, but you need to know how to request that information from the API, which is what we're going to be covering firstly in this video. In this particular video, we are going to be building on top of all of the work I've done in my prior videos, such as my WhatsApp and Instagram deployments. So in order to fully understand this and, and how it's all working, uh, you need to watch one of those videos up here. I'll put the Instagram one up so you can see that. Essentially, we're going to be using that same system, adding a little bit in that allows us to export the transcripts and then showing you the Airtable setup that we're using and also the make automations. The way this works is that every time a conversation is started on our website, on WhatsApp, on Instagram, wherever it is, every time a conversation is started, we're going to be saving what's called a thread ID. And every time the conversation starts, we generate a thread ID. And in my prior builds, we hadn't been doing anything with that thread ID apart from using it in the conversation. But in this case, we are going to be saving that thread ID to an Airtable and then we're going to be taking that thread ID and looking up all of the messages within that thread ID, pulling them all out, packaging them up, analyzing them, and then putting them all into a nice database and spreadsheet for us to look at and analyze later. As always with my videos, everything that you see here is going to be available for free on my resource hub in the description. So you can get the Airtable template, which is the database. You have the Make Automation template, which is a, a very complex one that I've created for you guys to all use and plug in and get started with immediately. Then we have a Replit template and also a mini chat template. So it's all templated. You guys are gonna get access to all of it and I'll walk you through how to use it now. To get started, you need to clone my REPL, which is available on my resource hub, as I mentioned. There'll be a link there that you can click and it'll open up this page and you'll be able to click this fork button in the top right and that'll take you to a page that looks a bit like this once it's all booted up. Again, as I mentioned, in order to understand what's going on here, you do need to watch the Instagram deployment, the video, which I will now link in the description as well. So watch that and come back and a lot of this will make a lot more sense. And we're gonna skim over a few things like the API keys that I did cover in depth on those videos as well. What this particular builder is, is just a basic custom knowledge chatbot. I've removed all of the tooling from this. So all it is using is a knowledge-based document with information about my AAA Accelerator program. So I've given the information on that and the point of this chatbot is going to be able to ask questions about the pricing and the features and things like this. Now, you won't necessarily see me using it in this because I've already created some transcripts for us to use later in the video, but I'll give you a quick walkthrough of things here and how this is different from my prior videos and how this is going to allow us to export the transcripts so that we can analyze them and, and manage them as well. And the functions.py file is the main difference here, which is this add thread function. And this is interacting with an Airtable base that I've created that stores all of the threads which we get to in a sec. Aside from that, we have this create assistant function here. So if you want to modify this and change the knowledge base, you can delete your knowledge base on the, on the left, this knowledge document and upload a new one. And then you can change the name of the document here as I've done in my prior videos. There is no tooling here. All it is is a custom knowledge base. There's no lead capture, there's nothing. The point of this is just to show you how you can export the thread IDs and then pull the information from there in a second. And our main.py file is another key difference here from my other videos. And that's in this start route when we're calling to start the conversation. As I mentioned, we're gonna start the conversation. And then when we generate that thread ID, we need to send that thread ID to our Airtable and save that to access it later and pull the information from. And here is where we are calling the add thread function to send that information to our Airtable. In this start conversation function, there is one other difference, which is this platform argument that we're going to be including. Say if I deploy this application and I want to use it on Messenger and I want to use it on WhatsApp, we can actually specify on the many chat side of things, which you'll see in a second, we can specify which platform 
we are calling this the start conversation from. So we are able to see in our Airtable where these conversations and where these threads are coming from. If you are following along and want to copy this and get it working on your end, then you do need to change these two secrets up here. I've gone over how to get your OpenAI key before and how to get your Airtable API key as well. As mentioned, I have covered that in my WhatsApp and Instagram videos. Jumping into our Airtable now, you are going to be able to clone this entire base. It'll be in the resource hub as well. There'll be a button when you click on the link that'll be up in this top corner. You can click on that and it'll allow you to clone the entire thing and start to make edits. Once you've cloned the Airtable base, you need to do one thing in order to make this work on the replit side, which is go over to the top right and you can do your API keys as you do this as well. And you can click on the web API documentation. And if you go down to the Smith Solar CRM, if you scroll down to the threads table, and if we go to create a record, it will get this URL here. That says threads at the end. Oh, I need to get the whole thing. Copy that. And then we can head back to our functions.py and you need to delete this, which will be my one and paste in yours. And that will make sure that it's trying to send to yours and not mine. You'll see there's a couple other tabs up here. These are just from the other projects. I like to just keep them all in one so I don't have 50 different Airtable bases for all these different videos. But the only ones we're worried about in this case is going to be the threads and the overview one. In the threads table here, I'll give you a quick orientation. Here are the thread IDs that are sent from our application. When we call this uh, add thread function, we're passing the thread and the platform and that is being saved into our Airtable here. We have the thread and then we have the platform as a nice little drop down select here. Airtable is also automatically filling the created at field. And then we have the real data that we're trying to extract out of these thread IDs, which is the transcript and the topic. And in this case, I've added a status column and a date one as well. So the status can be processed, arrived or empty, which I'll go into in a second. And the date refers to what's in the overview here, where you can get a high level overview of what kind of volumes coming through, what kind of questions are being asked, etc. On the left panel here, I've made a few different views that allows us to switch between them. On the screen, I have this ready to process view, which is basically anything that hasn't yet gone through our automation system to pull the transcripts out and label them and classify them and everything, which you'll see in a second. These are basically waiting to be processed, hence the ready to process name. Then we have the processed ones. What will appear here are all of the transcripts that have already gone through our automation system, come back and they've been labeled, they've got the full transcript, etc. And then here's an empty one because sometimes you get empty threads. We want to keep them out of the data set. And then you can see all threads here as well. For these thread IDs to actually be getting created and sent off, we of course need to call it within our application that's actually sending these messages. And in this case, we're using ManyChat like with my other tutorials. So the difference here between my other ones is that in this case, we are needing to go on this create thread. And here I've added this question mark platform equals Instagram. So in this case, it's sending a, a get parameter. We're sending a, a little bit of information attached to the URL. And if you go back to our main.py file, that is where we are expecting it here. So it's from the request, it's getting the platform key and it's saving it to platform. And then we are sending off platform to our add thread function, which is adding it. And it goes back to Airtable and make sure that we're getting the right value in the platform column. It's a little bit complex because there are three different things going on here. But basically, whenever a conversation starts on WhatsApp or Instagram, we're going to be sending off the name of the platform so that we can log it in our Airtable as well. Aside from that, everything in here is the same as my other videos. So I've gone off screen and I've gone through the conversation. You can click the preview button up here. And if you click the preview button, I can copy this and send it to myself on Instagram. And I've had a bunch of conversations. And these have all been logged to Airtable already by using this function, which is being called every time they start. And so that is what you are seeing here, which are all of the thread IDs from the conversations I've had are waiting to head our automation system so that they can get all the transcripts pulled, which we're getting into now. We now need to call the assistance API and request the information that's inside that thread and process it and send it back to Airtable. For that, we'll be using make.com, which is probably my favorite automation platform. And luckily for you, I've already created an entire template to make this as easy as possible for you. So what you'll need to do to get that template is go on my resource hub, of course. There'll be a link to sign up to make.com if you haven't already. And there'll also be a link to download the template and then you can come back to the screen ready to create your first scenario. Now on the top right, we can click create a new scenario. And then with that file that you downloaded, you can click the more button on the bottom and click import blueprint, choose the file and choose the blueprint here and then save it and bam, you get all of this work that I've done today which is going to completely automate the whole process. Now I've tested this pretty heavily. It is working very well for me right now. To get this working on your end, it's a very easy setup. We've just got to do a little bit with API keys and then we can get it running. First thing you need to do to get this started is to click on the search records node here and you need to add a new connection. Mine's already set up, but it won't be for you. On the connection type, you can click on Airtable token or key 
and then we need to give it a name. This I'll call tutorial two. And then we need to go back over to Airtable and create an API key if you haven't already. So if you've already set this up and you know what to do, you'll probably already have an Airtable API key that you use within Replit. And then so you can take that same one over and use it within Make as well. But for those who haven't got one yet, we can click on the developer hub up here, go to the personal access tokens on the left, click create new token, tutorial two. Now with the scopes here, I've had issues with these. So I recommend just go all out here. It seems to be one of them that causes the issue, and I think it is this webhooks manage one. Make sure you've added all of these scopes, because if you miss one of them, then it's not going to allow you to make the connection over on Make. So once you click confirm, you'll be able to copy your API key, head back over to Make, and then you can scroll down and paste it into here, and then click save, and it's going to have created a new connection for you here in Make that you need to set up on all of the other ones as well. So all of this should have pre-filled, but if it hasn't for you, then you need to copy the exact settings here of the base being Smith Solar CRM, the threads table, the view of being ready to process, and the only output field we're interested in is the thread ID. The limit is 100 also. Then we need to do the same things on the rest of the Airtable nodes. So we can click here, make sure you're using your connection. And these are the settings here if you need to pause it and take a look. And then finally, we have the update record here. And these are the settings you need to copy here. So Smith Solar CRM, threads, we're pulling the record ID, which should have already populated. We have the all messages, the topics, these map toggles are turned on for these. And we also have smart links as true. So make sure that you have that on as well. Before I run it, I should probably give you a quick breakdown of what's actually going on here so you're not completely blind. But what we're doing is searching for records in Airtable that are on that ready to be processed uh, view. The ready to process view is handy like that because we can keep it as a, a storage or a holding area for all of these transcripts that have come in over the past day or so as our people have interacted with our, with our GPTs. And they all land here waiting to be processed. And then we can just fire it once, fire the automation once on a scheduling, which I'll show you in a second. And then when we fire that, it's going to run through all of these and run the processes needed to pull that in, analyze the transcript and fill out these fields. Once we have pulled all of those records in from the ready to process table, then we need to aggregate them all into an array, which you don't need to worry about too much. And then we're basically going to loop through all of the different records. So we might get 50 different records that have come in in one batch. Then we need to loop through each of them, which is done with this iterator here and everything that follows after this, it needs to go through all here and then loop back over for each one. So one record, loop back over, two records. So it goes over and over and over again on every different record by pulling the thread ID in and doing these next steps. With the thread ID that we've pulled in from that specific row, we then call the OpenAI API that allows us to get the information from these threads and we're inserting the thread ID from that row into this get URL here. And actually I've just noticed one other thing you do need to change. Uh, you need to add in your own API key here. So this is your OpenAI API key. So you can go get that from your OpenAI account and come down here and just replace this, keeping the bearer in the space. And that's going to allow you to call and ask for the information back. And it's going to allow you to be authenticated to do that. What this does is pulls back all of the messages out of the thread. Then we process that data a bit. If there's no messages in the thread, then we go to this one, which is basically going to say, okay, this is an empty thread and label it as empty. But if there are messages, then we're going to loop through all of the different messages that came in and smush all of them together into one big long piece of text saying user said this, assistant said this back and forth. And then we send it off to a chat GPT node in which I've written this prompt that says it is a transcript analyzer. And I've given it a couple of different labels. You guys can have a look through this in your own time. Basically in my use case where this GPT has been an assistant helping people learn more about my AAA accelerator, I wanted to be able to pick out a couple of different labels or, or things that might've happened within the conversation. So I said they might've asked about pricing of the accelerator. They might've asked about the features or benefits. They might've asked about me and about the business and about who runs it. And they might've asked about something outside of that, which I've called other. Then all I'm telling it to do is to output, well, identify if there are those labels in the, in the transcript and then output a comma separated set of labels for this particular transcript. And then all I'm doing is passing in that big smushed up transcript that we've created. I'm passing that in as the input and telling it to, okay, pick out the labels for this and return it as comma separated labels. We then smush those labels together into an array and then we're able to send it off to Airtable and update the record that we've been working on. So that's when we pass in, okay, now we have the whole transcript pulled from the API into that big smushed one. We can send that back. We have also the topics or the tags or the labels that we've got out of the conversation. We're going to send those off as well. And then we can update the status of it to being a processed record. So with all that talking out of the way, we can now show the magic happening live in front of you. I've switched over to the process tab, which is empty right now. But as they go through and are labeled as processed and we've done all the stuff that we wanted to, they're going to appear here with their transcript and with their tags as well. So if I click the run once button here, we should start to see them populating in here. Bam. Transcript topics. 
And you can just sit back and watch as it continues to go through all of these different transcripts. You'll notice that there's a little bit of a difference between the number in the process and the number that when they're ready to process. So we can see that it's finished over here. It's run through like 40 different messages, 14 different rows. And in the empty one, you'll see there's a couple that have shown up as well where the thread was. This allows us to get our process data nice and easy put into one table. And here you can see the transcripts have been saved. All of this information here and we have the labels as well. As I mentioned, there is one more part of this that I've just thrown in there to show you kind of where you can go with this information once you've been able to process it. And that is this overview tab up here. So what the overview tab does is it's sorted by date. So we have each single day of the month, you sort of add these records as you need to. But what we have is count columns here. So this is the total number of messages that happened on that day. This is the number of pricing related questions. The questions that have been tagged with pricing that have shown up, the feature related questions, the about questions, the other questions. Now this is a linked record or a linked table to the threads. At this point, it's set up manually. So you can see I can remove this and I have to go in there and add the date as the 17th. So you have to go through manually at this point. It's a little bit more advanced to set this up automatically, but this allows you to show how you can label all of these to a certain date and then start to see some overview data of, okay, how many messages are we getting? Is it trending up? Is it trending down? And then you can go into Airtable interfaces, which allows you to make a dashboard out of this, which is an entirely different video, but it starts to show you where you can go. Once you have this kind of quantitative data, we have numerical data based off the information and, and the things that are happening out in your, in your chatbots. And that about wraps it up for the video, guys. I hope this has been helpful. I hope this has opened your eyes to how you can be pulling information from the Assistance API to get that thread data, to get the messages that are happening in all these different channels and aggregate them into one place. And then more importantly, how you can actually process and analyze that information so that you can start to get some valuable numerical and, and types of data that you can actually pull insights out of for your business or for the clients that you are working with. If you have enjoyed the video, please hit down below and leave a like. I think something like 95% of people who watch these don't leave a like. So I really appreciate it if you can go down there. It supports my channel, supports me making videos like this and giving away these templates and everything that I do. And while you're down there, you can subscribe to the channel for more videos like this where I teach you how to build AI solutions and sell them to other businesses or implement them in your own. And if you're not already in my AI Business Accelerator program where I teach you how to make money with solutions like this, there'll be a link in there as well. And of course, all resources mentioned in this video, shown in this video are going to be available on my resource hub so you can get access to them all there for free. If you want to learn how you can create advanced custom GPTs with lead generation capabilities, you can check out my video here where I go into depth on that. But aside from that, guys, that's all for the video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.